When President Obama quoted Atticus Finch in his farewell speech, it brought to mind a moment in my own life when I realized that the difference between me and a playmate was more than just skin deep. May was a little black girl I played with every summer when I visited my grandmother in eastern North Carolina for two weeks. She and her family lived in a two-room sharecropper shack across the road from my grandmother's country store. I remember that May and I had to do her chores before we could play every day. We'd feed the chickens and collected eggs and hung her mama's wash out on the clothesline that stretched between the corner of the house and a big old poplar tree in back. That tree was a gathering place at the end of the day for the black men and women who worked on the farms around Scotland Neck, North Carolina. They would come into grandmother's store and they'd buy uh, you know, a Coke and some nabs or, or Jack's cookies or a piece of cheese and bologna and they'd go sit out under that tree and talk. Anyway, when May and I finished our work, we would tear off into these woods that were back behind the tobacco field that were filled with tall pine trees. It was a blanket of pine straw so we could run in there and you wouldn't hear the sound of our footsteps and we could transport ourselves in some, some imaginated, imagined play. We'd be lost there in that space until either it got too hot for us or our stomachs got too empty. May's mom, would, May's mom would inevitably have a, coal, a pot of cold peas or beans waiting for us with cornbread. But before we could eat, we had to step into this big aluminum tub out in the backyard and she'd pour water on us and we'd wash ourselves off. It went the same every single summer year after year, until one day when May and I came running in from our play, and I saw her mother um, pulling the white feathers off of one of the hens that we had fed that morning. She had hung it up, she'd cut off its neck and she, head, and she'd hung it up by its feet on the clothesline to let the blood drip out, and the sight stopped me in my tracks. I was a town girl and I had never seen anything like it. But May went about business as usual. She got into the tub and was washing herself off. And I could not understand why she was not upset. It made me so mad that I turned around and ran to my grandmother's store and flew through it and back into the bathroom and sat down on the toilet and slammed the door. I was a bit of a drama queen as a kid. <laughs> but by the time I was ready to come out, May's mom was in the store explaining to grandmother, I believe I done scared that child to death. She saw that dead chicken and turned white as a sheet. I am so sorry, Miss Faithful. I'm so sorry. I was angry. Not at May's mother, but at May, my friend. Whenever we played together after that, it was never the same for me. It was then that I began to understand that May and I were not the same. In grown-up terms, I discovered that she had a very, very different world view than me. Oh, we looked different, and I knew that she was poorer than me. But when we played, none of that mattered. There have been so many times in my life when I...